recess. I call the Senate to order and I recognize Senator Bradley for a motion. Good morning, Mr. President. I move that we adjourn from the early session. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion to adjourn passes. We are now in the early session. The Senate will be attended to our chaplain, the Reverend Hannah Hanson. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of life, for our lives and the lives of all those people, men, women, teenagers, and children, entrusted to the care of these, your faithful servants. You know the decisions that the senators face this day and the consequences of their choices on behalf of the people of New Hampshire. Guide them with your grace and compassion. Fill them with your yearning for dignity and respect for all people. Lead them with vision beyond the immediate into the future where you promise hope and not despair. Remind them of your steadying presence during times of debate and hard choices. I pray that on this day, your faithful women and men who fill this room will be blessed by you to do the work you have given them to do with humility, patience, persevering love, and justice for all. In your holy name, I pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't know where they took our students to, but the, uh, I'll, uh, I, um, I don't understand because I read this script here and it's all women. I don't know what happened. I want to take a moment to recognize the students who are representing the Boys and Girls Club Alliance Youth of the Year program. The Youth of the Year program is a comprehensive nationwide program which honors, honors club members for their service to the club, to their family, community, academic performance, values, and life goals. There are six contestants from Boys and Girls Clubs across the state joining us today. They are Alyssa Susi from the Boys and Girls Club of Manchester, which is represented by Senators Booten, Susi, and Alessandro.
in being named a contestant from their Boys and Girls Club. Tonight, one of these young ladies will be named the Youth of the Year and will go on to compete in a regional competition this summer. We wish you all the very best of luck this evening and thank you for joining us in the Senate. And, and his boss, 
and with all the women are being selected as boxes, but uh, we're honored to have Matthew O'Neill here. He's a special agent, Secret Service, and this is his boss, colleague, who is in charge of the Secret Service uh, for the state of New Hampshire and really the world. That's the <laughs> Matthew O'Neill is a, a wonderful agent who's done great work. Uh, Senator Topper of Delaware put into the congressional record a tribute to federal agent employee Matthew O'Neill. This is what he says to me. Dear Senator D'Alessandro, I hope this letter finds you well. Thank you for reaching out to my office in regards to my floor statement about your constituent United States Secret Service agent Matthew O'Neill. On April 14, 2015, I recognized Special Agent O'Neill on the Senate floor as part of my ongoing efforts to highlight the exemplary service of outstanding Department of Homeland Security employees. Special Agent O'Neill's dedication and service to his country merits special recognition. We are a more secure country because of his efforts. Thank you for offering to present the enclosed statement from the United States Congressional Record to Agent O'Neill on my behalf. The best personal friends, I am sincerely Thomas R. Copper, United States Senator from Delaware. So I have for Agent O'Neill his tribute, which was given on the Senate floor by Senator Copper. And just to mention a few things, Agent O'Neill has been around the world cracking cybersecurity and protecting the United States of America from intrusions by our aggressive enemies. He's received national recognition for his work, and uh, it's, it's a great tribute, A, to public service, but B, to the kind of men and women who dedicate themselves to protecting this country. So, Agent O'Neill, I'm proud to present this to you on behalf of Senator Copper.
that is a global option and that it be determined an assessment of their choice by local school districts. The second sentence uh, ensures that uh, another goal that I think we all share, that SAT test or uh, the ACT College Readiness Assessment also be utilized at the option of a school district um, as opposed to mandating or forcing the Smarter Balance Test. And the reason why this amendment is so important is that a number of us have heard from our superintendents uh, recently that while they can use the SAT or the ACT uh, test, they are forced to pay for, or the state or feds are forced to pay for, um, dual testing of SAT or backdoor. So we want to make sure that one test can be administered and only one test has to be paid for. And my understanding is that there are $3 million in the general fund that go to reimbursing local school districts for this. This should be something that we all share. So in conclusion, um, this is not a backdoor to any state mandated or federally mandated test. This is a local option to develop their own accountability assessment. So for that, I urge the body to uh, support this amendment. Question is the adoption of floor amendment 1863, Senator Lundy. Well, thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. I also rise in support of the amendment. Um, I think the heart of the matter with House Bill 323 as amended is whether the New Hampshire Senate is committed to a system of public education that challenges students, holds students, and schools and teachers accountable for effective expenditure of public funds, and now ensures flexible local control within that shared vision of an educated citizenry. Of course, we know we swear in our constitutional oaths to the commitment to cherish education, but we also know how long the struggle it has been to create an inclusive and equal system of public education in our state. It really wasn't until the common school movement in the 1830s pioneered first in Massachusetts by Horace Mann, and we were the second state to come on board with that movement in common schools, because we knew it had to address the challenge of ensuring that students, rich and poor, male and female, native born and immigrant <laughs> students, shared the democratic values and the education necessary statewide for a rapidly changing economy. That movement also ensured through state visitation that school buildings were safe and suitable for education, and the teachers were prepared and accountable. Sound familiar? Of course, that was case through, that was one phrase one through eight. Uh, high school education was not mandatory, and we know the damage done when Manchester's mills collapsed in the 1930s, and that damage was magnified in human tragedy because most of the men had no more than an eighth grade education when those mills closed. High school did become universal in our state. We joined the nation in offering kindergarten, led the nation by raising the dropout age, and we funded adequacy, and now are committed to raising educational standards through our curriculum. Common schools yesterday, 21st century cur curriculum and accountability today. Both are our commitment to democracy and opportunity for all. Despite all the attacks and the, I guess, 19 amendments now, on House Bill 2323. As amended, it is now a means so teachers will teach, students will learn, and school districts will have a new freedom to determine what testing and how many tests are appropriate. I'm also particularly interested in that we are able to continue our experiments with competency-based education. We all know we have to reform testing. And that's why we need the amendment to House Bill 323. The original bill was sponsored by the chair of the House and passed a nearly unanimous vote in that, in that body. Uh, they tried to incorporate the critics of our testing and of over-testing. Um, it, it also tried to include a commitment to local solutions, to working with the New Hampshire School Board, the Department of Education, and the input of educators across the state. I think the Senate amendment is crucial because it makes important changes to support the development of alternative methods of education and local control. Those who wish to work, continue work in competency-based assessment may do so. Think career and technical education, project-based learning, experiential education, 
My friend from District 6 knows that Rochester has embraced competency taste education with great success. Many of us heard last week on Tuesday from students and educators in competency pilot programs at Pittsfield High and Sanborn High of the excitement and commitment of students and teachers to learning. I visited Dover's Career and Technical Academy, Fire Academy, and heard students talk of finally finding a commitment to learning that extended into all their classes. So shouldn't the Senate now join the House in standing for public education, higher standards, and less testing? We who cherish education must stand up with our local schools, but we almost also must support our Department of Education, the New Hampshire Board of Education, and public education itself. When your fourth graders visit the State House, ask them if they'd like to have less testing. Visit your local career and technical education center, or go to Rochester or Pittsfield and ask students and teachers if they want to continue to experiment with competency-based testing. Talk with the Business and Industry Association of how we can make the STEM curriculum work for New Hampshire to improve our labor force. We have entered a thicket of politics on House Bill 23. But as Robert Frost said when he was lost in a thicket, the only way out is through. Our children's future and our public education need House Bill 23 as amended, and I hope we will stand with them. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Waters. Senator Reagan. I rise in opposition to this and all the other amendments before now and after this to this bill. I arrived at this conclusion when seeking the truth, I found I was unable to believe information coming from the State Department of Education. I am so uncomfortable with the amount of different opinions from superintendents in the state, just by themselves as a group, I'm disturbed that uh, we never hear from classroom teachers. And I am in my third year with the Pittsfield School District working on a Nellie Mae Foundation multi-million dollar grant to find ways to improve our schools. So in three years I've been able to come to some conclusions and I have buy-in from more than one superintendent in my district. And they are untrusting of the information that they get from all the different places they get information from. And this is too risky to think that we fix something that is not guaranteed in any manner to improve the education of our children. It's suspect. So I'm hoping that I'm wrong about all of this. I don't think so. And I think the safest path for us with 323 is to vote no, and then we'll get to work on what can be a viable solution to the over-testing problem. And I want you to keep in mind that the person that controls the test controls the curriculum. And if you think that they're going to allow the local school district to invent the test, and then they're going to come right back and say, that doesn't give us a statewide measure. It only measures what you've decided to measure in your district. So how can we compare that? And that's going to be a very compelling argument. Because everybody's going to say, and everybody says they've been saying this to me for 30 years, I know there's problems in the public schools. Thank God it's not my public school. So everybody is kidding themselves about what's happening in public education. And this is not going to fix it. This is not going to repair anything for anybody. And I urge you to keep voting no until we can get to the next one. Thank you, Senator Reagan. Senator D'Alessandro. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I rise in support of the Bradley Amendment. I think it does three things which are essential. Number one, we retain the statewide assessment. Number two, we give a local option. In number two, we still reserve the right to use the SATs and the, A the ACTs. We should also use the PSATs, by the way, because I think it's a good measurement. 
As Vice Chairman of the New England Board of Higher Education, I'm telling you that encouraging a student to get involved in a test is the right thing to do because it's preparation for the next step. We've had a program, again funded by Nellie May, called College Ready New England. College Ready New England. It encourages students to become involved. It encourages them to take a PSAT or an SAT so that they can at least prepare themselves. I think the Bradley Amendment retains this philosophy, allows us to move forward. And I must say, I've been a teacher for 50, God, 50 years. 50 years. I've been in the classroom at the high school level. I'm in the classroom at the college level. I was an administrator at a college. Let me tell you, we're doing the right thing. Let's move forward. Uh, and listen, nothing is perfect, but let's move forward and save the day. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Delcino. The question is the adoption of Amendment 1863 F. Any further discussion? Ready for the question? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Aye. No. The ayes have it. The floor amendment is adopted. The bill is still on second reading and open for further discussion or amendments. The question is the adoption of what to pass as amended on House Bill 323. Are you ready for the question? Senator Stiles. Thank you, Mr. President. I would just like to remind people that, like, Passing this bill ought to pass. We are allowing flexibility at the local level for them to determine how to uh, provide assessments for their kids. If we reject this amendment, you are putting them back on a rigid schedule of testing every single year, every single grade level, with a smarter balanced testing. I don't think that's what our people are asking for. So I would ask you to support the, the amendment and the pack of pass. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to uh, thank Senator Stiles for her work, Senator Bradley for his work for this amendment. On behalf of Senate uh, District 23, we have Sanborn Regional District, we have the Epping School District, and both are encouraged by this amendment, I believe, and I am being voted for it, for local control of our local communities. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, given that my understanding is there will not be a roll call on this, so I want to make my views public. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. President, members of the Senate, we all want the highest standards of education for our children, and, uh, and we want our children to be able to achieve the greatest possible standards that they can. Uh, however, when we, you know, we heard testimonies that there has been 18 amendments and then a 19th amendment filed. I, I voted for that amendment because I think it's a, a teeny fix to the overall bill. But the bill as it sits is problematic. And I, I could speak for <coughs> the city of Manchester. Two years ago or so, I was at a meeting and the mayor was there, the uh, commissioner uh, DOE was there, the question the mayor asked is said, do we have to do smart balance tests? And the commissioner said, no, you do not have to. I remember that as clear as if it was said yesterday. And yet in February, the city was forced, under the threat of not receiving federal money, was forced to adopt smart balance tests. That's not what they wanted to do. They, adopt, they had adopted their own standard not common core standards, but their own standards. And then they, they had the proverbial gun to their head, and they had to adopt the smarter balance test as opposed to what they had been using. So uh, for that reason, Mr. President, and to my colleagues in the Senate, uh, I, this bill is not ready for prime time. It needs more work. And I ask you to please vote and join me, uh, please join me in voting no, on the bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Booth. Any further discussion on House Bill 323 as amended? The question is the adoption of ought to pass as amended on House Bill 323. You ready for the questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. No. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted and it's awarded to third.